Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Coffee with Katie. You can probably tell from my voice, but I am sick. I'm currently like getting over it. I feel a little bit better today than I have the last couple of days. I've been homesick. It's been a time. It's just the cold, I think, but it is what it is. Legend is obviously here getting pets. Um, today I have my Valkyrie mug from Fable Grounds Coffee. I love the color and the design. It's beautiful. You can use my code RENEGADE10 for a discount, but it's always in the description below. Today's video is going to be my December TBR. I am relaxed. I am in a baseball tee cloth overall situation. So we're going for comfort and I'm also trying to get some stuff done today because I do feel a little bit better. So here we are. But you know the deal with these, we're just going to be going over the books that I hope to read in December. The first book that I'm hoping to read is The Christmas Murder Game by Alexandra Benedict. Um, I saw this while scrolling one day and thought it would be just like a really cute kind of murder mystery read for Christmas. And I don't usually read Christmas themed books, but I was trying to do a little bit of that this year because I thought it would be kind of fun. And I thought this would be something that I would be interested in. It's a murder mystery, but I'm not really sure all about it. Let me see. It says 12 clues, 12 keys, 12 days of Christmas, but how many will die before 12th night? The annual Christmas game is afoot at Endgame House, the Armitage's grand family home. This year's prize is to die for, deeds to the house itself. The Lily Armitage has no intention of returning. She hasn't been back to the Endgame since her mother died 21 years ago, and she has no intention of claiming the house that haunts her dreams. Until, that is, she receives a letter from her aunt promising the game's riddles will give her the keys not only to Endgame, but to its darkest secrets including the identity of her mother's murderer. Now Lily must compete with her estranged cousins for the 12 days of Christmas. The snow is thick, the phone lines are down, and no one is getting in or out. Lily will have to keep her wits about her because not everyone is playing fair and there's no telling how many will die before the winner is declared. Including additional scavenger hunts for the reader, this clever murder mystery is the perfect gift for fans of classic mysteries, festive Christmas books, and armchair detective work. That just sounds really fun and also it's saying it's gonna give like clues to the reader. I don't know, it just sounds like an interesting time. I'm curious enough to give it a shot and hopefully I like it. The next one that I would like to try would be The 12 Dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayless. This is again, not something that I generally pick up, but it is like a contemporary Christmas book and I thought it would be kind of fun. It says, tis the season for finding romance and with this uplifting holiday read. It just sounds kind of cute and fun and fluffy, which maybe I will enjoy, who knows, maybe at the time that I get to it, it won't be my vibe because contemporary rarely is. It sounds like it's a 34 year old female main character named Kate and she is in the sleepy town of Blexford, England and it isn't brimming with prospects. And she's found fulfillment in her career as a designer and in her delicious side job baking for her old friend Matt's neighborhood cafe. But then her best friends sign her up for a dating agency that promises to help singles find love before the holidays. Yikes. 23 days until Christmas, 12 dates with 12 different men, the odds must finally be in her favor, right? Yet with each new date more disastrous than the one before, the whole town keeps tabs on her misadventures. Kate must remind herself that sometimes love, like mistletoe, shows up where it's least expected. And maybe it's been right under her nose all along. Um, I feel like I could like this book. Again, contemporary has to be done in a certain way for me to be really hooked. I think like I really enjoyed Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. Um, I think I would like it, but it just might not hook me the same way that some of them will. But it sounds funny enough, kind of like almost a Christmas dating show or um, a Hallmark movie that I would kind of like be intrigued enough or at least just enjoy it enough to finish it. So I do want to give that one a try. I've kind of like had my eye on it for a while. I think it came out in 2020. So I would like to read it. I think it'll be fun. It'll at least be somewhat enjoyable, even if it's not like the best thing I've ever read, right? The next one, taking like a hard turn from that genre that I want to get to is also one of the last books on my 23 for 2023 challenge, and that is Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn. This is book two in the Bloodsworn trilogy. I read Shadow of the Gods and really, really loved it. Um, this is a little bit thicker and I'm curious to see where it goes from here, but Essentially, in book one, you're following several characters, and they are all on their unique missions themselves that kind of all convalesce together, I think is where it's going. Um, because there are these gods like this that are these like giant god creatures, like some of them are dragons, some of them are wolves, there's different ones like rats. 
but they're all these gods that were presumed to be dead and they might not be so dead and there might be some lingering terror that is coming back on the land and they're trying to figure that out so i would love to get to this i know it's going to take up most of the time which is kind of why i'm putting in a bunch of more light and also easier to read faster to read books in tandem with this because i know this will take some time hopefully i will enjoy this one as much as the first one and then we'll be in a good spot whenever he announces book three it's also norris inspired which was really cool and pretty unique for me just i personally haven't read a lot of norris stuff at that moment next we have a soul as cold as frost by jennifer Krope. And this was one that I got last year that I was like, I need to read this in the winter or around Christmas time. And so I'm planning on doing that this year. And the tagline on this is the weather outside is frightful, which I think is just hilarious. And I think this is a series. Let's see. Yeah, this is book one in the Winter Souls series, but I think it's supposed to be kind of like a Christmassy series, but like also a twisted tale kind of situation where she's taking different stories and twisting them kind of like a fairy tale retelling um on the back it says merry christmas to all and to all a good fright after helen bell's eyes are opened to see the invisible rhyme folk who drift into our world from a realm called winter she's compelled to go on the run and into their snowy world to avoid being forced to battle in a quarrel of sword and bone a death sentence for anyone who steps into the arena with the deranged winter queen whose soul crisped to frost long ago. Soul Cold as Frost is book one of the Winter Souls trilogy, a fantastical Christmas themed collection. I think that that's just so fun. I just like that it's all Christmassy and fun. And I'm very curious about it. I've been curious about it for a while. This is an indie author. And I guess, I did not know this, but I guess they're all currently out. I thought we were still waiting on them, but they're all out. So if I really fell in love with it, I could absolutely binge it if I wanted to. But yeah, I don't really know too much about it other than what I just read for you. But there's a cute little map and I don't know, it just sounds festive and fantasy. And so I'm curious to finally find out what this is about. And then I also was throwing a couple more books in here that I really wanted to get to before the end of the year. So I really need to finish the Broken, the Bonds That Tie series by Jay Bree. So I need to finish book five and six because I've read one through four. So book five is Tragic Bonds by J. Bree, and book six is Unbroken Bonds by J. Bree, and this is finishing out the Bonds of Thai series, as I just previously said. I really liked the series. I feel like the first book really hooked me. I thought it was amazing. It, like, immediately made me pick up book two. I liked book two okay. Then book three, I really didn't like. I think it was. And then book four, I was I thought was okay. So I'm hoping it swings back into me really liking it again. But I just need to finish the series, and so I might as well tack it on to this month while it's on my mind, while I need to get it done, and they're pretty quick reads. So I need to finish out that. If you don't know anything about this series, you're following Ollie, who, in this world, your magic is kind of tied to also having a bond system. So from birth, you will have bonds. If you are powerful enough and well-off enough, kind of, it depends on how powerful you are, how many bonds you have. You may have one, you may have six. In her case, she has five and there and it's like you're one you're one person or whatever so it's kind of strange because there's like the central bond which is ollie and then there's these five guys that are bonded to her so they all are with her basically and she's with all of them separately anyway it's a mystical magical thing but the magic system is really cool um with the abilities you have it's kind of like supernatural abilities almost like mutants that kind of a thing where one of them can read minds, one of them can like shapeshift into different animals. Like that stuff's pretty cool. And there's like a war with these other people that are wanting to take down the society basically. So I just wanna wrap this up and figure out what what's gonna happen basically. So I'm planning on reading those as well. And then this was supposed to come out in like spring and then it was supposed to come out in September and now it's coming out in December and I cannot wait and as soon as I get my hands on it I will try to devour it as soon as as fast as possible but that is The Gentleman's Gambit by E.B. Dunmore. I have been looking forward to this book for over a year because I quickly read the, the League of Extraordinary Women series by her and like I said the release of this book got pushed back several times but it's finally coming out in December and we are going to be getting Catriona's story and I can't wait. She did post um, the first chapter for her newsletter readers and I did start reading that a little bit. Um, I can't wait to see what she does because Evie Dunmore, 
can do no wrong to me. I this, These are the only books she's written so far, but every single one I've read I've loved. The second one was my favorite, but each of them has like really important things to say with feminism and the suffragist movement and I've loved all of the characters, even the characters that I really wasn't excited to read about. I ended up really enjoying, so Catriona will be a fun one to follow. She's more quiet and studious, so I'm excited to see what happens with her, I'm sure, mess of a love story, and what she contributes in the feministic suffragist movement. I'm just so excited. She's also part Scottish, I think, and I'm sure that's going to tie into it, but... I'm excited. I can't wait to finish it. I really have no idea what it's about other than I think she gets like tricked into a marriage or tricked into like a compromising situation because it's, you know, 1800s England, Scotland, wherever she is at the moment. But I'm very excited. I love Evie Dunmore's writing and will be, it'll be kind of one of those bittersweet moments where I'm very happy to finish the series, but also very sad for it to be over. And another book that I would love to get to, this is going to be a stretch because I know it's literally coming out like December 26th. So it's going to be coming out the end of December. So if I can read it, I will. If not, I'll probably finish it up in January. But that is Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. Um, I know all of us are desperate to find out what happens after the cliffhanger in Divine Rivals. <laughs> I am no exception and I need to know. So I will be picking that up when I can. But if you don't know what Divine Rivals is about, you're essentially following two characters who have a, um, they work at a rival newspaper, but it's in a world of kind of like World War II, but it's magic and it's gods instead of the two human armies, but they recruit human soldiers. So they're like all fighting in this war together, but there's like wyverns dropping bombs instead of jets. There's like hellhounds instead of soldiers or something. And all of that's just really interesting, but the gods can also control you if you agree to fight for them. So very, very anxious to see what happens after the cliffhanger, like I said, in book one. And I believe this is a duology, so it should be the end. I shouldn't have to fret any longer after it comes out. But it was really good. It took me by surprise. I loved Divine Rivals. It was very unique. I thought it was very unique, at least. And it just really hooked me. John loved it. I loved it. We're very excited to continue the story. If you haven't read it, you should read it. And even though that's plenty of books for December, we're going to do a shelf pick because I like to hurt myself. I'm going to get my Death Star mug and we'll do my shelf pick for December. This always makes me pretty nervous, especially if it's going to be like a big book with Hunger of the Gods. Oh no. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Here's the thing. I drew one. I can't do it. We're drawing again. I just can't do that right now. I can't do it right now. It's not folded up at all. Oh, I got God Killer. I've already read that. Let's put that aside. <laughs> okay. I got Monsters Born and Made. Monsters Born and Made. Hold on. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I can't find that book on my shelves right now. So let me look it up real quick. Tan V. Burwa. Monsters Born and Made by Tan V. Burwa. And I don't know why I can't find it on my shelf, but I do remember this being a YA book. And they said it was like the Hunger Games meets Scorpio races or something. And it's about like a sea monster, like an underwater sea monster race. And to compete in this race, it's very dangerous. It's a big competition. And in general, this family is the one that are like capturing these beasts, helping train these beasts or whatever, tying them up, getting them ready for the races. And the chariot tournament is for like the upper class and the winner receives, you know, gold glory, all that good stuff. And something takes a turn. They cannot provide for their family this year. And if they don't have this money to provide for the family, then their ill sister doesn't get treatment. And the character that we're following cheats her way into the race because if she doesn't, her sister could die. So I remember thinking it sounded really good and being excited about it. Hopefully I can rekindle that a little bit, but I think it'll be fun. Hopefully I have time to read all of these books, but I think it's, I think it would be a solid reading month. Hopefully it's a little festive, a little fun, some fantasy, some Christmas stuff. We'll see how it goes. Please comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are on these books. If you've read any, if you read any of them or what you're planning on reading in December. But as for now, that is it for today's video. Please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to. And I will see you next time. Stay safe and caffeinated. Bye.